Well, Susan, I'm uh, so glad that we're able to meet today. Dr. Jones just let me know um, that you two talked about the possibility of, of coming in and, and speaking to me, and he gave me a little bit of background. Um, Real quick, I'll just explain who I am. My name is Jenna and I'm one of our behavioral health consultants. So I work with Dr. Jones to help um, help people when they wanna make changes or want to address certain behavioral um, challenges they're having or behavioral health problems they're having. And so uh, that's the, the goal today is to meet with you and, and talk about the things that you're wanting to change. And even though Dr. Jones filled me in a little bit, I'm really curious and would love to hear from you um, why you're coming in to chat with me today. Yeah, so um, every time I come in for my annual appointment, um, it's always the same thing. Um, have you quit smoking? And it was always the same answer. No, I have not. Um, and this was the first time he offered me a different type of resource. Um, you were available. Um, and I figured I'm here, um, I might as well um, hear about um, what you have to offer, so. Okay, so sounds like um, interested in hearing what, what options there are. What made you decide to take the chance and sit with me today and talk more about it? Um, what, what made you wanna kind of keep talking about the issue since you're asked about it every year and, and I know that can be challenging. Yeah. What made well, you wanna I mean, come I, today? You know, I don't wanna, be a smoker for the rest of my life, um, you know, and, and I know that it's you know, not something that, that I want forever. Um, it's just, it doesn't really feel like now's a good time, but um, I'm like, you know, I'm here, um, I might as well um, just have a conversation. Okay, great. And, and I'm really glad you did because I think that's a, that's a hard step to take. So I'm, I'm glad that you're even here, you know, to, to talk about it. And you said you don't want to be a smoker forever. Can you, can you share more about that and, and the why behind that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I've been smoking since I was, I mean, I started when I was in high school. Oh, it was just the thing that we did um, to, you know, socialize and thought it was cool at the same time. And, you know, now it's just, something that that I do a lot um, my daughters give me a hard time about it so um, you know and I definitely don't want them to grow up um, to be smokers so I'd like to quit at some point in time it's just right now I'm stressed and I have a lot of things going on and I'm not not sure now is a good time for me okay so it so it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate um, that, that you've been smoking for quite a long time, started pretty early, um, has sort of been a part of, of your, your life for a long time. Um, and you, you're stressed and you've got a lot on your plate, but it sounds like it's also really important for you with your children um, to, to make some changes to that behavior. And you said you didn't want your kids to be smokers. Um, tell, me, tell me why, what, why wouldn't you want your kids to, to move into smoking? Well, I mean, I know how hard it is for me to be like berated <laughs> by other people about quitting or that this isn't good for you. And, um, you know, you know, you need, you need to stop smoking. And so I definitely don't want them to have to go through any of that um, nagging and, you know, cigarettes, it's not that bad, right? There are worse things. Um, you know, than, than cigarettes. So um, yeah, I just don't want them to have to go through the same things I'm going through. So it sounds like being berated, feeling like you're being berated for it has been not so helpful um, in, in your wanting to quit. Yeah, it just further kind of makes me think, you know, I just, I don't want to hear it. Um, yeah. Um, is there anything that you're so so it sounds like you it's important for you to be a good role model for your kids mm -hmm. um and i'm wondering if you know sort of as you've you've thought a lot about this you've heard about smoking for a long time yeah. um and have been you know that suggestion has been made to you and and things mm -hmm. have been described to you as you've heard any of that are there some other reasons why you think it might be important at some point, maybe you're not right now, but at some point to reduce smoking. Any, any things you've noticed 
uh, about its impact on you that makes you, makes you think you might want to quit? Yeah, I think um, I don't like the smell. Um, I don't like having to be, you know, feeling like I need it um, in order to be relaxed. Like it's kind of ruling my life. Like I have to figure out like, do I have enough cigarettes? Like, do I need to get more? Like, where are they? Um, and that's, that's annoying. Um, and it is, you know, it is something that I actually use for stress relief. Um, and so I, I don't necessarily want to give it up because of the stress relief component, but at the same time, it's sometimes stressful to, um, you know, be covering this up or, um, you know, wondering about when I'm going to actually be able to have one or have a break. Um, so. So it sounds like it's taking up a lot of mental energy. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even though it's a stress relief, sometimes it actually creates more stress yeah. and maybe, um, has a little too much, it kind of has a lot of control over you in ways that you don't like that you wish you kind of didn't have to deal with. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anything more about that as you thought about it? Um, I mean, I think it definitely creates problems with my family. So um, my kids are like, mom's going out to smoke again. And um, so your you kids know, are noticing. Yeah, my kids yeah. are noticing. Um, my spouse doesn't like it. Um, he would clearly prefer um, if I didn't smoke. Um, gives me a hard time about it. So, you know, those sorts of things. Um, I might have be able to have better relationships. Okay, so it sounds like it's impacting relationships in addition to it kind of being in control and you having a lot of mental energy taken with when am I going to smoke or can I smoke or do I have enough cigarettes? It's also causing some problems in your relationships. And, and how would you want that to be different? Or, or might, how might that be different if you were able to reduce or stop smoking? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be nagged anymore. Um, so that would be. Nobody a, likes to be nagged. That just really a, stinks. A stress reliever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I wouldn't. Um, I could think about something else rather than, you know, when am I going to be able to take a break um, and smoke? Um, yeah, my, my life would not be revolving around using tobacco. Yeah, so it's, it's really kind of taking up a lot of your territory. Um, I wonder if it's okay for me to ask about your health as well, um, in terms of any impacts you maybe noticed with your physical health or how you feel. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, physically, I feel fine. Um, I mean, I'm, I've always been able to, I have, I may have a little bit of pain, but who doesn't have, you know, a little bit of pain, I don't have any medical conditions. I mean, I just finished my physical. I'm trying to do kind of those yearly checkups. Um, that's great. That's a really good way to make sure you're taking care of yourself. So that's fantastic that you're taking the time to do that. But I, I know everybody says, you know, it's like supposed to impact your ability to exercise or do those things. Like I still work out and I really haven't, you know, noticed a difference. So I'm not quite sure about that perspective. Um, but okay. Um, I guess another thing I'm curious about is, uh, if, if you've done anything in the past to try to quit before and how that's gone for you, what's, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Yeah. So I've, um, I've tried to quit a couple of times. Um, so I used, um, one time I did cold Turkey. Um, and then another time I used the patch. Um, when I did, um, cold Turkey, um, it was not pleasant, um, but it was okay for a while. Um, and then I had a really stressful encounter with my daughter and I was just went back to, to doing it. 
um, with the patch, I think, I don't know if I used too much or whatever, but I just felt really terrible um, and, and it did not feel good. Um, and then I went out with some friends and there were cigarettes there and I just started back up again. So it hasn't, hasn't stuck. Um, and I'm like almost nervous to, to try again, um, because it really hasn't stuck in the past and it's been a hard, painful process. Like I just haven't felt good. Um, and so I don't physically feel bad now. So it's like, why put myself through that right now? So it sounds like if you were going to try to quit, it would be pretty important for you that it would work and you would feel confident in your ability to succeed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask a question just in terms of, you know, if we can kind of think of this ruler that goes from zero to 100 with zero is not even remotely important and 100 is the most important thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Where would you put quitting smoking on that ruler? Um, I mean, I think right now it's like a, it's a four. A four? Mm -hmm. Zero to 10 or zero to a hundred? Sorry. Oh. I, zero oh, to 10? Zero to 10. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, you, so about a four uh -huh. in terms mm -hmm. of importance. Okay. Yeah. So why did you pick a four and, and say not a two? What made you pick the four? Yeah, I think, um, you know, because based on some of the things that we talked about, um, even today, I realized that there's maybe a little bit more reasons why I don't like it and why it's controlling me. Um, and I'm not necessarily kind of comfortable with something <laughs> um, controlling my whole life. Um, and at the same time, like the the possibility of trying again feels a little daunting, especially if I'm not sure that it's going to work um, this time and not sure if it's going to stick. So, um, so that's why you landed on the floor. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, it feels daunting um, and you want it to stick if you try, but at the same time, you're feeling kind of frustrated by the amount of control that smoking has over you right now. And that doesn't feel good. You, you kind of wish you could shake that off and, and not have tobacco be in control of things you do and how you think and how your interactions are with your family members. Is that yes. yeah. a, a decent summary of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The, and, and this kind of goes back to that, the, the first part I just was reflecting back to you is the other thing we, we like to check in with people about is the confidence that they have, you know, as they're thinking about whether or not they want to change a behavior. Um, so on that same ruler, we'll go zero to 10. Um, where would you put yourself in terms of how confident you are that you could make some changes to, to quit or reduce your tobacco use? Um, yeah, I think I'm like, two okay like and without without something else to it just doesn't feel it feels like I've tried and as much as I might want to um I don't really have anything that I feel I confident might work specifically for me um so you didn't give me a zero so let me hear you know, why, why wasn't it a zero? Why was it a two and not a zero? Yeah, I think, I mean, I know I've done difficult things in the past. Um, and I know I even was able to quit for a short period of time. Um, so I think that's, that's definitely part of it. Um, and I know it's something that um, is important for me to do in the future. So I think that's got me feeling like, yeah, I'm not like never, like no confidence. So you mentioned you've done hard things in the past and have been successful. Mm -hmm. Can you share more about your experiences getting over some hard things? What, yeah. what helped you? Yeah. So um, I think a lot of what's, what's kind of helped, helped me in the past um, with um, has been ask, 
asking for help. <laughs> so um, not doing things, not doing things alone, um, doing things with a support system um, has been helpful, but it's hard to find time um, to, to do that. Um, but I, I know if there is a change that I want to make, um, if I can have other people who are supporting that change and who are assisting me in helping me be accountable, that that's. So you've been successful with change in the past, especially when you've had support around you and a support around making that change. Yeah. Um, so that that's something that um, has worked before for you. Yes. Yeah. So I've I've changed some of my um, eating habits, but it's usually only when um, you know that the, the people around me um, are um, you know helping facilitate that in some way. So if my kids are you know supportive um, and they're eating the same healthy foods, or if my husband is um, you know helping me cook meals and, and planning healthy meals. So if I have that support, um, then it makes it a little bit easier to, to start to move in that direction. And thinking about that with your tobacco use, um, who would, who would be good supports for you? Who, who do you have on your team there that would support some of these changes that you're trying to make or might yeah. consider making? Well, my kids nag and my husband nag me all the time. So they would probably love it if they were able to, you know, start, start doing something different about that. Yeah. And maybe, maybe less nagging and more supporting. We can talk more yeah. about what would, what, what, what would you imagine would be helpful for your family to do to, to support you? Yeah. Um, let's see what would be helpful. Um, I think not, yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of what would be, I know what I don't want them to do. Mm -hmm. Those are always um, easy ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know what I don't want them to do, but what I, I do want them to do is a little bit harder. Um, I think, um, yeah, I might want them to maybe just talk to me a little bit more about it. Um, and if, if it is something that I'm planning on doing, um, that we have a clear understanding of, okay, so uh, if I'm doing this, um, where you can ask me about it in these times and that I'm kind of setting those rules rather than, you know, they're just arbitrarily like, oh, you're doing it again, like, which just gets me frustrated, which just makes me want to do it more. So if I were to say, hey, I want you to, if I were actually to say, I want you to ask me about this in this way, um, that might be hard um, to, to do. I don't really know how I would have that conversation, but, um, but yeah, if, if I had a little bit more control over it, it might be helpful. So maybe if you were able to give some guidelines of what would be the most helpful for you mm -hmm. um, and maybe talk to them about that to put them in a better position to be helpful. And I don't know, I don't know how much my family understands since they've never been smokers. Maybe people that have actually been smokers might, um, I might actually be able to connect with them better, um, you know, so because yeah. I don't think they get it. So that I think that's a that's a great idea and observation that maybe somebody who's been through this before and has come out the other side or, you know, is kind of going through it at the same time might be helpful. Um, would it be okay if I shared a little bit about some experiences I've had working with other folks who are trying to quit in their families. Sure, some, yeah. some possibilities. Just, uh, you know, I think one of the things you mentioned that uh, is a great observation you've made, I mean, you've thought a lot about this clearly, mm -hmm. is that um, it's a stress reliever for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we kind of pluck this out as a stress reliever, um, other, other folks I've worked with have used their family in that regard. So if there's something to do with family members, that's a stress reducing activity, whether that's taking a walk with your spouse or doing a mindfulness or, you know, kind of like closing your eyes and meditating with your kid or playing a board game, something that's going to do that same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Other folks I've worked with, does that sound like anything that would work 
in your family to instead of saying what not to do kind of plug in some of these other things or does that not yeah. quite fit um I mean I think it's worth a try um you know I think if if you're not asking me to stop smoking right now I can definitely um you know consider you know, trying on other things um to relieve some stress well, and, you know, again, just to, to make sure it's really clear, you are, you are a hundred percent in control of the steps we take and what you're comfortable doing and where you want to head with this. Um, so what I would like us to do together is figure out what's a reasonable way forward. What, um, you know, if any, uh, yeah. and, and talk about, um, I'm happy to share what options are available to you in terms of things that could be supportive. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, I think you're really sensible to kind of explore what's, what sometimes gets in my way and we can figure out ways around that. But what I've heard so far, if it's okay to summarize mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. this has been something that's been on the table for a long time, um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you have kind of been nagged about whether it's mm -hmm. in your primary care physician's office or sometimes mm -hmm. at home. Um, mm -hmm. but, but you're, you yourself are also kind of nagging, uh, yourself about it mm -hmm. because you've noticed it's really taking up a lot of my mental mm -hmm. space and it's really taking mm -hmm. up, um, you know, this flexibility and control I'd like to have over my life. Smoking mm -hmm. kind of dictates at times when I don't want it to. And, um, I'm having to think about, do I have enough cigarettes and when will I get my smoke break? And there's, there's something about that that doesn't feel good to you that you'd really kind mm -hmm. of like to have that control back in yes. your life. Um, and there's some other things you don't really like about smoking, like the smell of it um, mm -hmm. and having to hide that smell. It sounds like from mm -hmm. time to time, depending who you're with. Um, yeah. and, and it'd be nice to kind of be rid of those things as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> is that, is that kind of an accurate yes. summary of Yes, yes. There's a lot of things that I'd like to to be rid of. And I think um I think the best maybe the best way forward for me is to um maybe get a chance to to practice some things to think about a little bit more. Um and then maybe to even just come back and have another conversation about this. I think that sounds great. Um again, I'm I'm here to help support you in figuring out what steps you want to take uh, and what's going to be a meaningful way forward. So um, I'm happy to follow up in next appointment uh, if you want to try and, you know, make some more observations and try some of maybe the stress reducing stuff with your family and we can talk about how that went. And then again, I'm happy to talk about the options that are available to you if you're interested in hearing those yeah. in terms of medications. <laughs> Um, you know, some of the groups and supports we have yeah. in place in our practice as well. I don't, I don't know about medications right now, but I might be willing, if you have some information I could take with me about the support groups. Yep. Um, I, I have I a handout I that. can send you right but, now. So, yes, yes. I'll take that information and, and kind of see if those, if those things um, fit, but I think, you know, thinking a little bit more about it and then finding a customized solution um, that I feel more confident will work for me this time, um, you know, might, might help get me there. Okay. Well, that sounds great. So, uh, maybe if it's okay with you, we'll get an appointment scheduled next week and touch base and see how, how we can keep figuring out next steps. Sounds great. Thank you right. so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.